Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton and it's time for the game's first proper boss battle. So, uh, yeah, let's go fight a giant dragon, I guess. You again? And here I thought I'd seen the last of you. I'm sure you'll be more than hospitable to me this time around. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention one of the reasons I hunt your kind. You're much too ugly not to put out of your misery. <laughs> Flock off, Featherface. Absolutely stellar line there. I do like the way she punctuates her comments with uh, bullet fire as well. So, as I said, this is the first proper boss fight. I have some criticisms of it, which hopefully I will manage to say as we go through. But first up, I want to be like. So the uh, the plot thickens since Fortitudo here was clearly talking to someone on the phone, or yeah, fuck it, let's go with that on the phone. Um, so he uh, the question is who was he talking to? But um, I do really enjoy that um, Bayonet has kind of forgotten what she's doing. When I was playing this casually at this stage of the game, I had forgotten that the plot was actually we are trying to find a gemstone. Um, we're searching for the other eye of the overworld, right? Uh, which incidentally is a reference to a very classic um, Jack Vance story in his uh, Dying Earth fantasy novels back in the day. Way, way, way back in the early days of fantasy storytelling. Anyway, the, um, the eyes of the overworld have been kind of magic artifacts in a lot of media properties since then, just because it's a cool title, I guess. So, what was I saying? I was talking about... Oh, ah, okay. So, periodically you get these sections where you jump from rock to rock, and then at the end you have a cutscene with a uh, torture finisher in it. I love that she's just able to swing around things that are a thousand times her size, while also not touching anything, you know? She's just floating in the air. Where is her leverage coming from? Is she physically very dense? Is this the answer to the age-old question, why do witches sink in water and normal people float? Is it just that witches are very dense? I think we've answered it. I think we've, um, I think we've finally solved the age-old conundrum. So, um, yeah, Bayonetta is, at this point in the plot, ostensibly searching for, the, for that gemstone, the other one of the eyes of the overworld. However, um, Playing casually, I'd completely forgotten that at this point in the plot. And as far as I can tell, so has she. Like, she's kind of forgotten what she's up to and she's just like, Oh yeah, angels, let's fight the angels. That's what I do. That's my whole shtick, right? Ah, oh, you can bounce those back. Interesting, I've never done that before. So, she's kind of just running from place to place, uh, fighting whatever's in front of her. It really does feel like she's just completely lost track of what it was she was trying to do. Um, but yeah, uh, it's also worth noting that while in boss fights you are in an alternate mode where 
all of your attacks are huge scale wicked weaves instead of just um, being ordinary melee attacks. So, oop, there we go. Can I hit that one? Yeah. He did not care. So, yeah, uh, my main critique of this is just that you can't maintain a combo while you're uh, fighting him. Also, in order to hit him properly, you have to be pretty close and he fills the screen, so it can be very difficult to actually spot which attack is incoming and dodge it appropriately. Um, when he periodically smashes up the arena, all you can really do is just turn it back into normal arena uh, using the egg timer thing in the jigs. What are they called? What are those? Hourglasses. Thank you. Nobody said that to me. Um, but yeah, they always drop in the same places. So these jumping sections are a really cool moment, um, borrowing as they do from, you know, fight anime, where you, um, where the hero, you know, is moving so fast that they can jump off of rocks in midair. But there is a weird design decision, namely, when you are, when you press A to jump to the next rock, um, your position is not fixed. You can actually move around on the rock to reposition, and if you do that, the ability to jump to the next rock vanishes. There's only a very specific position where you can jump between the rocks. I love this animation, by the way. Uh, which means that, like, the purpose of that sequence is so that you have the cool experience of jumping from rock to rock smoothly and then punching the bad guy in the face, right? But the game itself undercuts that because when you try to do that, if you don't time it exactly perfectly right, or you misstep or whatever, you just kind of chill there for a bit. You turn around until you until you find the right spot, and then you jump to the next one, and it really undercuts the smoothness of that kind of motion. That said, this is rad. Everything she does is the cool guy thing. So this is phase two, where we are actually able to just wail on him much, much more easily. Um, I also do find myself wondering, is Bayonetta normal for a witch? Are they all this powerful? Because if they are, how the fuck did they get killed to begin with? Like, it seems like Jubile uh no, uh, Fortitudo here is like one of the top guys, right? Um, we'll find out later that there's basically four big like top boss angels, the four cardinal virtues, and he's one of them. So if he's basically one of the four kings of heaven, why, why is Bayonetta able to fight him at all? Like, how like incredibly more powerful should he be than her? More proof of the incredible density of witches. Oh yeah, I still haven't talked about sexuality and power and sexualization. I've got a whole lecture ready to go on that and I still haven't found a good place to slip it in, so to speak. So I think she yelled Agravon here, so I assume that's the name of this latest finisher demon. It's a nice little connection between um, the concept of a dragon and the concept of uh, a snake-eating bird, because, you know, a dragon is just a big snake and what would you use to fight a snake? Mm, there's many kinds of birds that do just eat snakes. You know, it's a really powerful image, the bird with a snake in its beak. I love the little wink there. You know, you're not nearly so ugly when you're screaming. <laughs> Foretold? Explain yourself. So we've heard that voice a few times. I have no idea who that's supposed to be. I assume it's Jubileus, the creator guy, but, um, oof. 
Yeah, like I said, it's really hard to get a good combo score on this one because um, you can't use your guns to maintain combo between, uh, you know, being able to actually land hits on him. And he's so big and he moves so far, it's very difficult to maintain. Still, I'll take a gold. I don't think I've got less than a gold so far, have I? Or did I get silver last time? No, I got gold. Let's see how many I can get. One. Oh, that was a bad one. It's really tempting to go for the bonus ones, but they're only worth ten. If you get a double, um, a double kill, that will get you ten as well. So, is it worth getting a healing item here? Um, well, I can't afford the big ones, so I'm just going to turn it into halos. I have plenty of um, crafting materials to make them anyway. So. As you can see, we got yeeted extremely far during that fight. Also, glancing at this, I find myself wondering, how exactly do we map this map onto Europe? This is supposed to be ostensibly set in real Earth, right? Uh, that looks a bit like France. Is, is Vigrid the fantasy world version of France in this alternate history? Or is this kind of jammed in somewhere? Because it clearly has access to the sea. Um, anyway, that's a mystery for another time. Although, although, the uh, the High Priestess in one of the flashbacks to back when Bayonetta was with the other witches, she did speak in French a bit. Very badly accented French. Mind you, the policeman who was hassling um, Luca in the, one of the previous cutscenes was British. He had, he had a very cartoonish... Um, non-British person's idea of what a generic British accent sounds like, but yeah, um, or I guess generic English accent, I should clarify. So we have French influence, we have English influence, we have a lot of Spanish influence with the Barcelonan architecture, or I guess just, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be generally, um, Spanish influence or just a sort of generic Mediterranean influence, and oh my god, I cannot stop talking, let's move on. So yep, that's going to be a very short episode today because that is just the boss fight. This whole chapter is just the boss. Um, as far as I can tell, that's going to be repeated throughout the game. There'll be a few normal chapters and then a boss chapter. I would fill in the rest of the time with, you know, talking about the different uh, notes in the notebook that I haven't read yet. However, as you can see, I can't access them. You can only get those inside uh, an actual chapter, so... I think that's a bit of an oversight. I think having access to those sorts of things in between chapters would make sense. But yeah, that will be all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.